So this is a short video explaining how to stop your feet sliding on a walk cycle. Uh, and this is a problem whenever you animate walk cycles, but it's important to understand before we get started that there are two basic ways of animating a walk cycle. Here's a walk cycle here with uh, Monty the Green Pea walking on the spot. And let me just show you another one that is almost exactly the same. Here's also Monty the Green Pea walking on the spot. These two walk cycles are quite different. And they are quite different because they've been animated in two different ways. Um, this one here has been animated by having Monty take a physical steps across the screen um, and then um, add a reverse translation on the world control. So if I select the world control down there, or the placement node as it's called, and then delete the forward translation on it, you'll see that what's actually happening here is Monty is walking across the screen and then I've used the world control to drag him backwards to create the sense of a looping cycle. In this shot here, by contrast, there's no, there are no values on this world control at all. There is actually a keyframe set there, but if I delete it, uh, it doesn't change the animation in, in any way. And that's because in this version here, the feet have been animated underneath the character as he's walking. Now, if you use the um, first method, uh, where Monty is actually physically walking across the screen, you will not get feet slipping in your shot. However, um, that's the only advantage of this work method because the big problem with this as a means of working is if we want Monty to take more steps, let's say we take this up to frame 100 and we decide that we want the shot to keep going, nothing is going to happen. In fact, uh, actually Monty is going to go back to the origin and that's because I've turned on my infinity curve. So let me just turn those off. I'll just go to, um, just press A there. So yes, yeah, so if I turn, go ahead and turn my infinity curves off. So let's go curves pre-infinity constant and curves pre-infinity, post-infinity constant. Um, I should now have a walk cycle. Uh, hold on, let's go back to the beginning. So now what Monty will do is just stop. Right, so I've set my timeline to 100 frames and Monty will just, uh, turn, just stop. And I can't turn on my infinity curves because Monty will simply return back to the, the, the origin. So the only option I have now, if I'm going to keep this going, is to, uh, let's turn off select surface objects. I've got to drag select my curves, copy them, go edit, copy, and then paste them from frame 33, edit paste. And this may or may not work. Maya is not, in general, particularly good at copying pasting curves, and things often go wrong. Now, in this case, it has actually worked. That's great. Um, but that's your only option. You've got to keep going. Whereas, if you animate the walk on the spot, like this one here, um, you we can keep Monty going indefinitely by simply adding a forward translation on the global control. So let's say if I take this to 100, so take my timeline to 100. And let's turn off select surface objects, select all my curves, press A. And let's now just select the global control. Um, and at frame one, I'm going to set a keyframe. And then at frame 100, I'm going to hit W for move and drag Monty over like that. And now see what I've got. And now I've got Monty walking along. And by chance, Monty's feet are not slipping much. Although that was just sheer luck that I got that right. Um, but you will see that they are slipping a bit. And this is the big disadvantage with using, with, with animating a walk cycle on the spot. When you add your forward translation on the world control, you get essentially an awful lot of animation for free. Monty can keep going indefinitely. Because as long as I've got my infinity curves turned on, which I do, so select all my curves, curves pre-infinity cycle, curves post-infinity cycle. Monty will carry on indefinitely. And I can change my timeline to frame 200 if I want. And just select that world control and take that over to frame 200. Like that. And Monty will now carry on for 200 frames. So anyway, that illustrates the point. So let's just hit Z to so take us back to 100, which is where we were. 
Now, the problem, of course, is how to stop the feet sliding. And there is no really, there's no single simple answer to this. If I look at my shot in the orthographic side view, and especially if I scrub through it frame by frame, I can see that the feet are sliding forwards while they're on the ground. So what I can do, my first stop is to slightly reduce the amount of amplitude of that forward translation on the world control. So I can reduce that. And that will get me, that's helping a bit. I can see it's still moving a little bit. So I get it to the point where it's not slipping too much. And that's probably going to be good enough most of the time. The key thing to understand with this is that the forward translation on the world control, or the placement node as it's called, must be the same as the reverse translation on each foot. So in this case, if I take the left foot, uh, and actually, just for a minute, if I just, re I'll just for now, just take off the forward translation on that world control. So I'll just delete that. If I go to the left foot, what I need to find, let's just take the timeline back to 33, is when that foot hits the ground, I should start with the right foot because it's simpler. When that foot hits the ground, it must travel backwards at a constant rate. So here, if you look at my my shot, that foot hits the ground at frame 1 and then doesn't leave the ground till frame 25, which is the squash position. Uh, sorry, 21. 21 is the squash position. So it contacts the ground at frame 1. And this curve here must be completely flat because the foot must travel backwards at a constant rate. Then the foot can come forwards here. That's actually a little steep, that curve. We could re re relax that. There we go. So from the moment that foot hits the ground, in fact, we don't need this keyframe here. I can just delete that because that should be a completely straight line. And that is the curve which will be counteracted by with a forward translation on this world control. So that's the logic behind what we're doing here. If I select the left foot, then that is contacting the ground at frame 17. That's the contact position. And then the squash position is at frame 5. So it's a little confusing because this time it's on the join. But if I select Translate Z, you'll see that from the minute it hits the ground at frame 17, carrying forwards to 25, we can actually delete this, we don't need it. Carrying forwards, carrying forwards, and now 33 is the right foot contact, but this foot, left foot is staying on the ground because we need to get into the weight position, the squash position where we get both feet. So this line here must be completely flat. And this again is where the um, uh, the infinity curves are very useful because they can help us make that join. And we can just probably move that up a tiny bit so that that is a completely straight line. And if I get this right, if this is done correctly, then in theory, when I add a forward translation on the world control, as I did before, it should the, the forward motion on the world control should be completely counteracted by the reverse motion on the feet. So let's just try that again. Let's go back to frame 100. And let's just pull Monty forwards at frame 100. So let's do one, two, three. He's taking about three steps. So let's have a look at that. So now he's slipping backwards. So I got it less good the second time around. So I'm just eyeballing it for now. Nope, that's not quite enough. And this is where the grid also becomes very useful, a little bit more, because you can see whether the feet are sliding by comparing it against the grid. And here I can see, okay, so the feet are still sliding backwards a tiny bit, but not too much. So it's working pretty well. So I can use the, um, uh, the orthographic side view, which is what we're in, panels, orthographic side, or sometimes panels, orthographic new left, that should also do the trick, um, to see whether those feet are sliding or not. But remember that perfection is not for this life. If they're not sliding too much, you're probably okay. Um, and if you really want to get it right, then the final thing that we can do to get everything working perfectly is to bake out our curves, and then you can manu manually adjust the feet afterwards. So here's how you do that. You select everything, and um, you go to Edit, keys, 
bake simulation options box and let's bake by let's first of all let's go edit reset settings and then under sample by we don't let's not bake every single keyframe because it'll be it'll be too busy so let's sample by two which will give us keyframes on every second keyframe and then you go bake and this will now bake out all our keyframes for 100 frames so what you now end up with is keyframes on every single well every other frame and now having done that we can now uh, select all our, wait, stop. Uh, so let's select everything again. And now we can go into our curves. Now we can turn off infinity curves because we don't need them anymore. Curves pre-infinity constant, curves post-infinity constant, and view infinity turned off. So no more infinity curves. And now what we can do, if the feet are still slipping, you can go into the individual uh, actually, let's go into the perspective view over there. And let's get, now you can really get into the detail of it. And now you can, you can go into those keyframes and really make sure that every single one of them, I can see I've got a little bit of a rotation in the X axis that I don't want. And actually that's because of that little overshoot there. Now I can see that it's going backwards slightly between three and five so what I can do there is simply move that foot forwards a little bit so between three and five and then five and seven it's moving still moving forward so what I'm now is individually adjusting each foot frame by frame a slow ponderous and rather dull and low-tech method but it does work. And this is what you would have to do on a feature film where you're basically doing kind of character cleanup at the end, uh, this kind of thing. And you have to do it for each foot just to make sure that that foot isn't sliding. And I'm afraid there's no better way of doing it than this. There we go. There's still a little bit of sliding in there, but. Uh, you get the general idea. You've just got to go in there frame by frame and make sure and clean it up and make it work once you've got your baked frames. So that's it. That is how to stop your feet sliding in Maya. If you really want to be certain of it, make sure that you always animate a, a walk cycle uh, with the character moving forwards across the screen, physically moving forwards. And then for each extra step you want to take, you physically copy and paste the curves. But understand that that method gives you much less flexibility uh, than animating a walk on the spot does. Uh, so that's it. I um, hope that's useful. And uh, check in for more videos in due course.